Version 6.13 of Prisma just dropped and there are some great new updates, including the move away from preview and into general availability for some features, including the Prisma config file. We've got prisma.config.ts here. And what you may have seen before is this early access key pointing to true in order to use it. That can now come out. That's no longer a valid field because define config here, the prisma.config.ts file, this is now generally available. So this is great, of course, if you want to be able to programmatically define what should be going on here with your Prisma setup, including where the schema should go, where migrations should go, the path for them, where the seed file should live and how it should be run. And there's much more we can do here as well. So just to recap how this works, let's rename Prisma to DB. Then I want to bring in the .env package. So that is going to give us a way to be able to pull in the environment file that we need to get to our Prisma Postgres database that we have locally. npm install.env. All right, then let's bring that in up here. We'll go import.env slash config. We've got an environment file here, which is going to have a Prisma Postgres, a local Prisma Postgres database. We can try running this with MPX Prisma dev. All right, cool, so the database is running. Let's open a new terminal window now. And let's do MPX Prisma migrate dev name init. Okay, the migration has been run and in DB, we've got our migrations directory. And again, this is driven by what's here in the Prisma config file. So if you've been using the Prisma config file and you've had early access set to true like this, you can just take that right out and you're good to go. Something else that is now generally available too is if you want to use multiple schemas in your Prisma schema. So that looks like this. We can come up here and we can set a number of schemas that we might want to use. Let's say if we're using a Postgres database and we want to have maybe a public schema, but maybe an auth schema, for instance, we can set that here in the DB block here, the data source block, and we can say schemas. And that might be something like public and then another with auth. And then maybe we've got a model here like model post, for example and that post can have an ID, title, content, etc. What we would need to do here is mark which schema each of these models belongs to. So for example, we can do double at schema and that goes to the public schema. And then this one perhaps is going to be for the auth schema. And there are tons of different use cases for multiple schemas and some providers like Superbase, for example, they're going to give you an auth schema for your users for anything authentication related and a public schema, which is going to be different. That's just going to be where all of your tables, all your general tables live. And so again, the thing that's different here at version 6.13 is that if we're using multiple schemas in this way, it's no longer a preview feature up here. We don't have to use multi-schema as a preview feature. That comes out, this is now generally available. All right, something else new at version 6.13 is support for externally managed tables. And so what that looks like is this, we have got our Prisma config here. And what we can do is we can come down here and we can define tables, this tables object. And then we might say external. And then we can pass an array here and perhaps the external table we might want to target would be something like users, for example. And so when we have something set up like this, where we have something listed as an external table, what's going to happen is that it's going to be ignored by Prisma Migrate. Prisma Migrate isn't going to touch this because the assumption here is that this table is managed somewhere else. It's managed externally to Prisma. However, this table should still be made accessible through Prisma ORM. And so in this way, we can use these externally managed tables. So these tables might be managed by different teams within the organization, for example. We can still query these tables using Prisma ORM, but any work we do with migrations, for example, we'll just totally ignore these tables. So flipping over to Prisma Postgres and what's new in the Prisma data platform, we have now got support for PG Vector as an extension. This is of course a long requested extension to be added to what is supported in Prisma Postgres and PG Vector, it allows for vector embeddings in your Postgres database. And of course it's useful for making AI applications. So looking over at the docs for Prisma Postgres, there it is right at the top now, PG Vector is available. There is a doc here on how to get started with it, how to add it through a migration in your Prisma Postgres database, and then some examples on how to query for vector embeddings. Now, the one thing to note here is that when you're setting up your schema, your embedding field, we need to use the unsupported type here. And that is because vector, it's not natively known by Prisma ORM, but you can still make use of it in your Prisma schema. All right, so the last thing that we'll look at today is some new capability with the Prisma Data Platform, and that is we can interact with it through a management API. We've got a management API now, which allows us to go to api.prisma.io slash v1 and be able to do things you might expect you be able to do with an API, like get workspaces that are there, get projects that are there, and also create new ones and manage them. 
And so this can be very useful if we want to do something like create a database in our CI CD pipeline. Maybe we want to run some tests in our pipeline and we want to stand up a real database to interact with it for a temporary period of time and then tear it down after. We can now do that very easily within our code because we are able to interact with the Prisma data platform via the API. There's a number of endpoints here that are available in the management API. We can get our workspaces, we can get our projects, we can also create new projects directly from the API. Now we're going to dedicate an entire video to working with the management API, so that will cover everything we need to know to be able to do all of that work. But one thing we can say here in this video is that the management API is actually what's used under the hood to create a new database without any authorization. And here's what that looks like. And very simply, all we have to do is run npx create db. We've got to install this create db package. Let's do that. And what we can see is we are creating a Prisma Postgres database. It goes to US East 1 temporarily. And after it gets created, we get a number of things here, like a connection string if we want to use TCP. We also get a Prisma Postgres direct connection string to accelerate. And this message down here that the database is going to be deleted at a certain time if we are not going to claim it. So this can be very useful if we want to spin up a database really quickly, get a connection string. We don't have to be authenticated to the Prisma data platform when we do this. Instead, we can just get a database very quickly and simply. All right, so that's all to look at today for what's new in Prisma 6.13. If you have any questions about what you've seen, please feel free to reach out to us. We're at prisma.io on the web or on x slash Twitter. We're at Prisma there. And we'll also leave a link to our Discord where you can join the discussion there. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more updates like this, we'd love if you'd subscribe to the channel and that'll help us to bring you more great Prisma content. Thanks for watching.